Hey, 420 MSP. I'm back with my friend Randy Rowe from Retail Technology Services up in the Seattle area. And uh, Randy and I actually go go back. I, I'm still struggling to figure out, was it Microsoft, uh, RMS? Somehow I knew you and I think you knew of me, but here we are in the whole new world of the cannabis technology field. So uh, great to see you again, Randy. How uh, How's your day going other than it's awfully hot up there right now? Well, yeah, I'm uh, for the first time in a while sitting in an air conditioning spot um, dealing with 100 degree weather. There we go. So you're a longtime player in the point of sale space for, for businesses going back to the Microsoft, well, probably even before. I, I Again, I think our intersection was Microsoft RMS, uh, yeah, Microsoft probably. Retail Management System, and I was SBS, and it all worked until it didn't. Um, but the uh, what, what what's your business model today specific to cannabis? What what do you do? Well, um, Harry, I've um, taken a few different approaches now on different ways to help the, the cannabis businesses. I I still maintain that um, it's been a little bit of a struggle for guys like you and me that um, are work uh, used to working with more mature businesses. Yeah, and um, the sooner you know you realize that and adapt. To for that the better off you're going to be but um it affects your business plan and and um uh, you know and the risk um and, yeah. and some of those things i've uh, gone a couple of rounds um and will continue to do so um to uh, you know do the best i can at helping the industry uh, grow up so to say um the uh, i've had the pleasure working with some of the best um, cannabis businesses i think you know um certainly in the area. And, um, and then also I've had opportunity, Harry, to, to work with um, some of the ones that are struggling and, and yeah. literally, you know, had me come in and help build their basic business elements, um, you know, versus being a little bit more uh, advanced on uh, how you would leverage technology in a, in a retail shop. And, you know, what I, enjoy the most about the cannabis when it comes to what you and I had, have done in the past, Harry, is um, cannabis has one of the most complete ecosystems for technology. Yeah. Um, and it's, and it's required to compete. And um, the, so, you know, your integrations and your, your operations and all those things, it's that much more important to, to make sure the basics are, are in place um, and working um, and that, you know, the consumer is getting the experience that you think they're getting. Yeah. What, what would a typical engagement be? So you go to a dispensary or dispensary train chain <laughs> to Monday. How do you slot in to, to, you know, what, what, what do you do for your customers specifically? Well, it depends on where they're at here. Um, like I say, I've uh, had a couple of different approaches and, I think that's really the, the the point is where are you at? Since this is an emerging market, you know, where are you at in this process of establishing your your operations and have you you know gotten to where you want to? Um, you know, what's not working? Um, but the uh, the part of my job is really consulting at, at, at a consulted consultative level is to help them decide where to start or what to do next. Nice. A lot of people do not yeah. um, know what to do next, Harry. Um, and uh, no, I, and like I, see, it. I see a lot of mistakes that are, you know, are basic. And, and then you see some more advanced ones. And so it really does depend on that situation and, you know, the problem, you know, that they're experiencing and what their outcomes are. Um, it's really been all over the page. Um, but, you know, are you on a good track uh, with technology? That would be probably one of the best ways I can help any retailer, especially. Yeah, today. yeah. No, this is interesting because, um, and, and, and again, you, you and I, we not only become friends, but, you know, we have similar styles and, and, and the way I consult to industry and help my clients and so on. Um, that's very different than where the managed services providers are today on, on the other side of the aisle, the traditional SMB nation, because they're all about standard operating procedures. And we're going to go into the customer site and we're going to do it exactly the same at each site. And we're going to offer them three monthly packages, gold, silver, and bronze. 
And so the MSPs are very standardized and, and then it, they, 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 they want to use, you know, everything that helps them make money and scale. So it'd be remote management and monitoring tools and so on. And Randy, there's something about that that doesn't completely sit well with me because what I really enjoyed in, in the 90s, 2000s small business server was the relationships. Each situation was a little bit unique. And, and I enjoyed being more of a consultant than a robot. <laughs> My industry has become very robotic on the other side of the aisle. What you're expressing is because this is a new industry, maybe, maybe you know, we're, we're, we're not there. We're not there for standardization and that kind of thing. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? Yeah, no, I, um, I second that opinion. It's, um, I'm, I'm, I lack the ability to find, you know, standards that are working. Um, you know, there are leaders and, and followers, but I'm not so sure the leaders are using the right standards, Harry. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, where can we find out more about you other than LinkedIn? Folks, go look up Randy Rowe on LinkedIn and, and give him a connect notice. But where, where uh, what's your web page? Oh, the, my website is www.retailtechservices.com. Um, I'm the founder of Retail Technology Services uh, back in 2011. And, and I built that company exactly with the premise that, you know, you and I are operating under now. And that is services is where, uh, is what, what is needed and is what's going to uh, enable a, a successful business um, versus a product type of a yeah. um, uh, a message. And the other thing I thought that was really huge, Harry, that, that RTS um, address that I know for sure you, you, uh, you and I are on the same page once again, is, I'm sorry, I keep looking over my fan. I'm, I'm literally having to cool my hands. Um, <laughs> the the um, one thing that was happening about that time, Harry, is, is the billing methods were changing, right? The software, the way you buy software and the way you buy technology now it's not just software um has changed to a um you know a monthly a subscription model correct and, correct and boy was there a lot of um you know back and forth on the pros and cons with that but i think you and i both know what is the right thing to do and what helps really with building these relationships that you referred to because it is all about that relationship and it's all about you know how you can you know garner the information that you, um, you know, that you have available to you with the uh, coworkers and, and uh, vendors, you know, that you work with. So for me and, 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 and folks like yourself and many others out there, the, the subscription model changed that to where now a few things you needed to be there the next month to support them because, you know, they're going to pay you for another month. I really thought that was the right relationship to have. And, and again, that's proven out. Um, another thing is that, that, that uh, I really liked about that model. And, and again, that's what RTS was really representative of is we, we stopped selling, you know, RMS licenses, you know, right. And moved into subscriptions on, uh, on products. And um, the, the part I, the other part I really liked Harry about that is how small businesses, smaller ones, uh, startups like cannabis can sign up for the same caliber of technology yeah that a major corporation can, um, yeah, you know, there's, uh, there's plenty of, you know, there are plenty of uh, caveats with that, but you know what I mean? That yeah. you, they have the choice, right? They can afford now to, you know, subscribe to a, a software module where before, you know, they had to come up with just thousands and thousands of dollars um, depending on, you know, those license types. And I thought that was a real, um, a real game changer. And, and again, that's, that's here to stay. And, uh, you know, it, it did go away from the monthly a little bit. I, you probably noticed the same thing. People started going six months and year because of, you know, renewals, right? I mean, right. having to renew stuff every month is, um, creates a little bit of work for everybody. Um, and, a, and an annual license is, I think, is more logical. Maybe you get some other benefits with that. But, um, yeah. but still, uh, if you want to use that software another year, no problem. You know, just another year subscription. And again, you get all the service, all the updates and, and all the software or you can change to something else. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. We'll keep up the good work and we're going to stay in touch. Thanks, Randy. Oh, you bet. You bet here.